bag. This is Easy B. I'm Easy B. Easy B Tactical. <clears throat> Real quick video. I debated about making this video because I was all geared up at the beginning of the year. I was going to go to Short Show 2022. I got my media access approved, pass and everything. I didn't get an invite to the range, the industry day at the range. However, I was still planning on going and then I got a little and an easy, didn't feel 100%, wasn't sure if it was COVID, life happens. And then I started debating, I had to take off work and blah, blah, blah. So I did not end up going to Short Show 22, which is saddening. But I still think, I still kept an eye on the coverage. I still watch some of the new items. I just want to share with you what excited me about Short Show 22 based on what I've seen from afar. Probably next year, hopefully we can go. Maybe the channel will take us there because we're big enough and so on and so forth. But anyway, I still enjoy watching some of the coverage, especially from TFB TV, Classic Farms, and just the different directing from the manufacturer and my um, my my browsing online. So I have a couple of notes here, things that I'm excited about that came out of Shot Show based on my interest. In no particular order, let's talk about, I think what I heard is Zastava releasing a new M77. I'm a fan of Zastava, although I haven't shown that too much on this channel maybe, but this is an M70, everything is clear. But Zastava, based on the coverage that I saw, announced that they're doing an M77, which is a 308 AK variant. So I'm excited about that. I actually did not know much about the M77. So I'm looking forward to whenever that's available, maybe we will get our hands on one of those. So Zastava and M77 should be exciting, should be interesting. Um, let's go next. Angstad arms. So I don't have an Angstad arm. I've always thought about getting an ADP9 because I like to collect subguns and guns that were especially submitted for um, candidates in the government contracts. Angst, Angstad arm ADP9 was a semi version of one of them. But they have announced that they are going to release an MDP9, which they talked about. I check out the website. It's going to be a roller delayed version of an M of the ADP9, which I love roller delayed. I love roller delayed. So Amsterdam MDP9, definitely exciting. I'll check out, I will have to check out the pricing and all that stuff, but hopefully I can get my hands on one of those eventually. But that would be one that I, I think is, it would be exciting and promising. So speaking of roller delay, let's go to another one on my list, Streetbog. The SP9A3, which I'm a big fan of the Streetbog. I'm a big fan of BNT, which I think is a competitor for this one. Uh, Streetbog was a competitor to them. But the Global Ordnance, which is, I believe, the U.S. representation of Grand Power, in, uh, which makes the Streetbog. Their booth, they have announced that they're going to have an S3, a Streetbog SP9A3G, which will means it comes in a Glock lower a compatible Glock magazine uh, receiver. They also mention a Glock SP9A3S, I believe, which is a shorter compact five inch barrel version of the Streetbog SP. I'm a big fan of the Streetbog. So that's exciting, that's promising. I don't have real pictures of that gun, but, and I can't see anything on the website for Global Ordnance or Streetbog. So I think Classic Farm did do a coverage of their booth. So you may want to check that video on YouTube. So Streetbog, Glock receiver and a shorter version, exciting and promising. Another thing that excited me, FN announced that they're going to remake the high power. They had stopped making that. They are making a new version, a modern version of the high power, almost a browning high power, but classic pistol, classic stuff. Looking forward to the FN browning high power, the FN high power and to see what it looks like and what it sh how it shoots in real life. So, not a pricing items, not a pretty pricey item. So we'll see what we can get on that one. B and T, exciting announcement day, which I had a pleasure to see it in person. Which I will release a video eventually. The B and T announced that they're going to have the SP9, SPC9 coming to the US. When when I visit the B and T headquarters in Switzerland, I had the chance to take a look at the SPC9. So they've announced that this is coming in the U.S. in the carbon versions, 
SPC9, which is a competitor. And if you were to think about that in one sentence, it would be a modern replacement of an MP5. So that's what they're going after with the SPC9 carbon version. HK booth kind of was interesting from what I saw in some footage from TFB TV and Classic. They were showing, uh, I believe, the 22s. Mm, I don't want to say remake. Okay, I guess 22 version of the MP5 in both um, collapsible stock, sliding collapsible stock, and pistol configuration. And I do have one of them. So these are made by Umarex, but they are actually original HK approved, HK branded, HK licensing. And this is the, I don't have a real MP5, so this is what I would like to live vicariously through for now. HK MP5 in 22 caliber. Shoots very smooth, very flat. Maybe I'll find a way to crack that barrel and convert it into a short barrel rifle. But, so that was fun. <clears throat> I did see footage of those on the I shot show, the HK pistol. Along the same line of HK, if I'm thinking HK91, which is one of my favorite on 93, the PTR booth was interesting. I just, again, I did not go in person, but I did see your coverage. They mentioned about the big PTR <clears throat> rifles, such as the, the 308 here, which I have one of them. Of course, all, every firearm is cleared and loaded. I can't be too gentle with these guys. You gotta manhandle them, manhandle them properly. So they, made, they shared the PTR 308 rifle, which is, a big seller for them. I do have a copy of this. I love this battle rifle in 308. Um, so that was interesting. That kind of get me excited to see that rifle there through the footage uh, I saw online. Um, in the same category, Arsenal. Arsenal mentioned that they will be bringing the SEM7, I believe, SEM7F, and then the SEM7K, which is gonna be pricey, of course. And I went to the website. I've seen the Sam 7K on some website where I get my, where I check out my arsenal. So this is this one is a Sam 7R, um, which they're also gonna make a Sam 5R, which is the same one in 5.56, it's already out there actually. But it was interesting to see the announcement that they will bring more Sam 7F, SF, the folding stock, and Sam 7K, which are the shorter version. Of course, those will be pricey and they'll probably go out of stock pretty fast. So it'll be exciting. I don't know if I'll still try to get one, but we'll see eventually. Still have to work for a living, right? We have family and kids, man. Those guns, that's a lot of uh, ka ching ka ching. Don't tell the wife, but she already knows. Dear Psalms, Actually, I should have mentioned that when I mentioned this. Now, one of my wish, one of my grail gun, which I don't have yet, battle rifle consideration, will be an FNFL, but I don't think I'll ever get the real deal. But DS Arms is a company I really like. I've been following them for years. They have announced they're making a DS Arm. Well, it's on their website. They talk about it at Short Show, the DSM Fallow version, which is a Belgium, a copy of the Belgium Fallow, which is a 20 inch Belgium style, very classic wood furniture and metal of a DSA FNF, uh, of an FNFL. So it's a heavy barrel, 21 inch big gun. That would be a nice one to have as well. So check out, I believe. TFB TV or Classic Farms, they may have done that coverage, but I watched the news feed for that one. That's an interesting one from the DS Arm. Last but not least, I almost forgot Pioneer Arms. I would have checked out Pioneer Arms booth had I been there because Pioneer Arms is introducing their line of AKs, new AKs such as the AK-22 rifle, 22 caliber AK, but all real made wood metal, good nice weight and then the side folding AKs which are interested in I have a couple of PPS well PPS 43s from Pioneer Arms but I don't have the AK 47s yet so Polish AKs or Polish company it, it will have been interesting to check that out in person so I think that's it so these will have been the booth that I was gonna hit for sure if I had gone to shot show 
Let me know in the comments if what you think of that list, so of my pick of my interest in 2022. Hopefully those will come out as promised and they will be obtainable. I probably won't. I'm not saying I'm going to get every one of those guns. I'm just saying what excites me for Shot Show 22. But those are the booths I was planning on visiting had I been able to go. But appreciate the support. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comment what your top three picks from that list Ah, and then we'll see if we ever get a chance of put our hands on and shoot those. Take care, stay safe, and thanks for watching.